What it is, what it do. You tuned in to the Jose Morales Podcast. I'm your host, Jose Morales. We're back in the ring. This episode here, I am going to have Philip Wynn from the gym, Anesthesia. We're going to get to know him better. Talk about his, uh, his story, uh, you know, everything from where he was raised to where he was born to why he started boxing, his career, what he does. And Philip is a guy that is very, very inspiring just because he does so much and has zero excuses. He just makes things happen. And I, I, this is a guy I wanted to bring on uh, because I know from, from um, a, a husband, from a, a guy that has a lot going on myself, and hearing it from other men that have a lot going on with themselves, um, hearing a story like Phillips is going to be very inspiring. And, and not just even for guys, just in general for people, just how much he gained from boxing, the things he did for his health, and the things he did for himself and, and really prioritize himself. Um, it's very inspiring. So this is Phillips Podcast. I hope you guys enjoy it. Philip, thank you so much for coming on. Um, I don't know. I know you say you're not much of a talker and things like that, but I don't know how, I don't know if you know how many people in the gym you inspire. Do you know that? I, I don't know that. You no. inspire a lot of people in the gym. So yeah. before I even got started, I want to make sure you knew that. And yeah. then I also wanted to tell you I'm one of those persons you inspire. So just by everything you do and how you handle everything, your yeah. work ethic is very inspiring. So thank I you. wanted to tell you that. And uh, so thank you for making time to do this. I know you say, oh, I don't, I don't know. I'm not much of a talker. So I was like, man, I know, I know Philip can make this happen. So <laughs> Philip is finally on. This is him. Philip Wynn. Um, I wanted you to give me the history on your last name. Because I know it's a very popular Vietnamese last name. So before we get started with your story and you, let's start with the last name. Where's this, where's, where does it originate? Give me, give me the 411 on the last name. Yeah, yeah. So I guess um, a lot, well, first I should start off with like how to pronounce it. Because a lot of people, like they asked me, how do you pronounce it? Because it's spelled like really weird. It's N-G-U-Y-E-N. Yeah. Uh, so some people say Nguyen or Nguyen or I was doing whatever. That. Yeah, That's why I asked. that was me. <laughs> but the but uh, in Vietnamese, the correct way to say it, we use a lot of the back of our throat, so we say Nguyen. Um, so in English, when we're using the tip, uh, in language that uses the tip of their tongue and um, in the in the lips, um, you don't use the back of the throat a lot, so it's easier just to just say win, like winner. So mm. the the proper way is to say win. Yeah. Uh, the history behind it is that um, I, I guess back in the day when there were when there were still like kingdoms and dynasties and stuff like that, um, there was uh, uh, the the Win Dynasty overthrew like the previous dynasty. I think it was the Li Dynasty or something. And so um, they were when they overthrew them, they were persecuting a lot of people, right? And so people would not want to get killed. So a lot of people would change their last name to Win um, just to avoid the persecution and also just i guess to be pay respect to the current dynasty oh, yeah that's cool yeah that's cool thank you for the history yeah, definitely. it's kind of similar to what i heard but i like yours better that's more detailed <laughs> so tell us about philip you know i want to know more about you i think everyone wants to know more about who you are uh you know your your or you know where you were born where you were raised tell us about you philip yeah, uh, well, I'm 37, coming on 38 in December. Um, I was a uh, Vietnamese American. I was born in the Philippines. I uh, came here when I was one. Um, and I basically grew up in Antelope area, Antelope, Sacramento. Um, grew up here all my life. Uh, went to college down in SoCal. I went to pharmacy school in uh, North Carolina. And now I'm a pharmacist. Yep. Yeah, that's the gist about me. Be, uh, I'm gonna go back. There was a part where you said you were born in the Philippines, but you're Vietnamese. Can you tell us a little bit about that? You know, so oh, how are you Vietnamese born in the Philippines? Yeah, so it's a, there's a long story behind that. Um, so after the Vietnam War, um, my my parents um, they didn't want to stay in a country that was like um, that was run by communists. So uh, they 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 were one of the the, the boat people, and so they escaped Vietnam in the middle of the night uh, by boat and then they sailed to Indonesia and from Indonesia uh, they got transferred to a refugee camp in the Philippines and so I was born in a refugee camp in the Philippines and yeah. so I stayed there once one and they got uh, citizenship in the United States and that's and they brought us over to, to Sacramento yeah yeah 
and and that's why he's named Philip, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's how, yeah. Uh, Philip. Uh, I got the I got to hear this story in uh, in Vegas from from his dad and his uncle, so it was really cool to hear from them and share their their you know the adversities they faced to get here and just their story. Uh, it was super cool to hear that. I I, I honestly is going to be something that I'm going to remember f- for the rest of my life, just the details and and I actually texted a couple of my friends and stuff that are reading me. So I was like, man. I even told him, like, you guys are built different, man. Shout out to you guys. Because I never knew the details of it like that, you know, um, as far as, like, you know, what they went through. Like, hearing it from somebody. So it was really, really cool to hear. Um, my so, parents were tough people. Yeah. They were tough people. Just, I, I I always think about that. Like, when when I'm going through adversity, it's like, it's like they, they basically, like, left everything behind. Mm-hmm. And, like, they came here, you know, when they were, like, 24, 25. Left everything behind sailed across the ocean, like risk drowning, risk pirates, risk, like just left everything behind and, and just to start a, uh, to start a new life and try to create a better life for us. So I, it, it, I think about that, you know, when I'm going to university and, and just realize like if my parents can do all that, I, I can do whatever challenge that comes up. Yeah. Do you think this is something that kind of shaped you throughout your life as far as like not going down a negative route or doing anything bad because you thought about your parents' sacrifice? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Is there, is there any at, at the time, a particular time you remember where you specifically thought about it throughout your life? Um, I mean, there's there's many times. I, I mean, it's something that I think about every day. Um, like, <laughs> whenever uh, like I wake up and the job's tough or or whatever, um, you know, I just... I just think, hey, if my parents can do that, do that. Like I can, I can do whatever I'm doing. Uh, I guess uh, one time in particular is, I guess, uh, in pharmacy school, like you know, where, where like I was just up late nights studying and stuff. Like I'm tired and like, I'm like, and I'm like trying to like push through it. And this is this is when I was like 25, 26, and like I just remember like the, the stories that my parents told me is like, man, it's like they did all that. And like you can't even stay up late to like try to study for your exam, whatever. Yeah. Just just do it, man. Yeah, yeah. When you look at it that yeah. way, it's like, yeah, you're right. I'm just staying up to study. Yeah, you know, across the damn ocean. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, that is. And, and and when you do that, you kind of put it into perspective too. Like, oh shit, hell, I am just being lazy. Mm. Super cool, man. So after that, we we talked about you know where you were born. You came to Sacramento. Mm. Um, Tell us about your childhood. What was that like? What was young Philip like? You know, uh, did you play sports? What was that like? Yeah, I was a um, my child. I was kind of a I was kind of a quiet kid. Um, kept to myself. Uh, I I played soccer growing up. Um, just just recreational. Um, mostly, you know, I I felt like I had a pretty normal childhood. You know, just hanging out with friends, playing soccer, playing video games. Um, grew, grew up in the '90s, so just, what video games do you like? Uh, I used to play Mortal Kombat a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mortal Kombat. I played like Final Fantasy, all the all the typical nerd stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. Yeah. So then you got into how, how how did pharmacy come? Over? You shared the story with me in Vegas, but mm. but well, how did pharmacy come into you? Like, what what made you want to pursue that career? How did that come about? And how old were you when you figured that's what you wanted to do? Yeah. So. In in college, uh, I always knew that I wanted to get into something medical because uh, I, I really liked helping people. Um, I liked uh, you know serving people and and and, and helping people get better. Um, I I at that time I was like I wanted to either do nursing or get into medical school, um, but quite honestly, I didn't I didn't have the grades to get into medical school. Um, and I didn't have uh, the grades to get into nursing school at that time. So I kind of took a year off and like uh, uh, did some extra like um, classes at community college. And uh, I, um, at, that, at that time, I, I got hired on as a pharmacy technician at Walmart. And I, I, I saw, and like, you know, working there, I, I saw like, you know, what the pharmacists did and, and I was like, I can do that, you know, like, you know, and then like they're they're on the front lines and they're they're helping people not in the same way, at, like directly as a, like a nurse or a doctor would. 
Um, but you know, they're still helping people with their medications and help to educate people and stuff like that. So I'm like, I, I can do that. So I went ahead and I finished all my courses and I got better grades, bought my GP up and then I applied to pharmacy school, got in and that's where I am. Oh, yeah. That's cool. And then tell me what you told me in Vegas, how later on you found out, remember? Well, about um, your, in your bloodline. My, you said it was your grandma that did the same thing. Oh yeah. Grandma, yeah. Yeah. Um, so it, it wasn't until like when I graduated pharmacy school and then my dad, he was like, you know, um, you know, what's crazy is your, your grandma was back in the day when she, cause she was, she was a single mother and, you know, to be, to be able to support the family, like she was doing like many different things. Like, um, and one of the things that she did was she sold medications to, um, to the people uh, in the village. And so she sold antibiotics, she sold like pain medications. And so it's, so she was basically the pharmacist of the village. Yeah. And so I was like, when I first heard that, I was like, oh man, that's crazy. It's like, so me it's and my- bloodline. Yeah, I know, me and my the grandma uh, shared that connection. Yep. Yeah. And, and did you ever meet her? Yes. Oh, okay, yeah. so that's super cool. That's super cool. And then uh, now, Tell me, tell me the love story with your wife. I know, I remember you shared it with me, <laughs> and it, I, I thought it was pretty interesting. Now you guys had so many chances to connect, yeah. but it was years later where you finally made a conversation. All that, yeah. So go ahead, share, yeah. share. Uh, it was definitely kind of wild um, because we both went to uh, college, uh, the same college, so UC Riverside, uh, same year, same major. We actually stayed in the same dorm on the same floor. And so we actually shared the same commons. Uh, and we took a lot of the same classes, but we never like met. We never officially met. Like she, she, she knew I was there because I sat in front of the class and like, you know, I was bald back then too. So she's, <laughs> she remembered like the, the, the dude, the big ball, the, the dude with the big bald head. Right. Um, and, um, and so we both graduated at the same time. We both, took that year off um, and then we both went to pharmacy school at the same time. So she went to the pharmacy school in Toro in the Bay Area and I went to pharmacy school in North Carolina. And then we both graduated at the same time. Um, and then after graduate, uh, I graduated, I came back to Sacramento, got hired on to CVS. She got hired on CVS too at the same district. And we and CVS does this like, um, like a, a dinner for the new graduates. And then we were sitting at the same table and like she was sitting across from me and she's like, hey, I know you. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I'm sorry. I don't, cause I, I always sat in the front. So I never, never really uh, saw her, but she was like, she, she, she was like, she's like, I went to college with you. And like, she told me like, you know, where she stayed. I was like, oh, I was like, oh that's crazy. We basically did all the same thing. Uh, and then from there, you know, our relationship like developed and I got married to her. And so that's crazy. Yeah. You guys, everything and didn't start the conversation until later on. Yeah. So how, how is it having a, you know, your wife in the same field as you? Is it, is it, give me the pros and cons of that. It's gotta be, it's gotta be interesting. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, one of the biggest pros is, is being able to talk about work. Um, she works in a different field of pharmacy than I do. Uh, she works in the hospital and I work in, in um, AM care. And so we deal with a lot of different kind of drugs. Um, so her drugs are more like, acute care and like they're like a lot of antibiotics and mines are more like for chronic management um but we're but you know when she has issues at work and she's you know um uh, and i have issues at work we can talk to each other and we kind of like understand what we're going through yeah. um and also you know sometimes you know she our our um our fields kind of like merge together like she might get a patient on chronic medications and i get i get a patient on acute medications that i don't know anything like vancomycin i don't know anything about um, so we can talk to, we, to, to, to each other and like, you know, and we can, we can ask questions to each other. Um, so yeah, that's, that's, that's that, a huge yeah, pro. Yeah. That's a huge pro. Is there any cons? Uh, it, is there not that I want to say on camera? <laughs> <laughs> uh, she's the, so she, uh, she's, she's definitely smarter than me. <laughs> so she, um, so I guess one of the biggest cons is like, you know, when I bring something up, she, she puts me in check. Say, Oh, it's like, oh, this medication is supposed to be like this. She's like, no, the medication is supposed to be like this, <laughs> which is, which is, which is cool. I, I guess it's, it is a co, but then a uh, pro, but it's, um, yeah, that's yeah. what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. Um, tell me about this. I didn't know this until recently about you. You have a, like a side business you do. 
Yeah. Right? Yeah. T tell us about that. What is that? And what exactly do you do? So, yeah. Um, so, aside from my regular job, I'm also a consultant pharmacist. And um, what that is, is um, so I travel to these clinics way far up north in Northern California. These are clinics out in kind of the the boonies, I guess. Um, they're they're Native American clinics, um, and they 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 hold a stock of medications. So according to to California pharmacy law, is if you're holding a stock of medications, you're considered a pharmacy, right? Uh, and every pharmacy has to have a pharmacist. They don't they don't hire. Uh, uh, they don't um, have a, a pharmacist on staff to like take care of that pharmacy. So what they do is they'll hire a consultant pharmacist. And so what a consultant pharmacist go, uh, does is they'll go up there, they'll check the stock, make sure everything is, you know, they're um, stored properly. Um, the medications are being documented properly. Um, they're administered for the right purposes. And so like I review, um, you know, their, their stock and then um, I write recommendations for them. And I do this for about seven or eight clinics up in Northern California. Uh, it's, it's quite a trip when I do it. So I, I have to take, uh, it takes about two days and I put 900 miles you know, my car every, yeah, all, all the time. Cause it's like all over. How did you get into that? How did you find that hustle? How, how did it How'd you find out about it? What made you do that? So, um, he, so I was already kind of doing it for my current job because my mm -hmm. current job, they hired me as a pharmacist, and then I'm, I act as a consultant pharmacist for them, even though my main job is is more patient focused. Mm -hmm. um, so I was already doing that, and so um, one of my uh, colleagues, um, he he knew I was doing that, so he reached out to me. He's like, "Hey, I have a I have a clinic all the way up in." Um, uh, Mount Shasta and that needs a, a pharmacist. I was like, okay, I'll do that. And so I went up there and started doing it and I did such a good job. Like they started referring me to other uh, clinics and it, so. It happened yeah. organically. Kind yeah, of. exactly. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. So you have your full-time job mm -hmm. and then you have this mm -hmm. and you have your wife mm -hmm. and then you have boxing. Yeah. How do you manage all these things? Um, so, uh, so it, to, to manage it, I, I try to keep my time as organized as possible. Um, and then to me, routine is key, uh, keeping a routine. Um, so for example, like every day, like especially days when I was, I was training in the warrior program, you know, you know, I came in at four, uh, I did the warrior program. 4 a.m. Yeah, 4 a.m. A.m., a.m. I came in at four uh, and then I went home, showered, uh, and then I went to work, did everything at work. Then I came home um, and I ate dinner real quick. And then I worked some more and I finished work, either finished work for my main job or finished work for my consultant, for, consultant job. And then um, and I had dinner and then I made sure I get in bed back by, by eight again. And so it was, it was by keeping that routine, you know, it, it helped me stay organized and helped keep my mind focused, you know? Yeah. Uh, if um, you know, there's there was like there was times you know like you know like a Wednesday night, my friends would like be like, hey, come come out and just hang out with us. It, I, I I had to really weigh um, the pros and cons of that, and weigh like whether whether or not I should be doing that yeah. um, because if, if, I, it was if, worth I, if it. I yeah if I did that, you know, it's gonna throw my routine off and it's, yeah. it it wouldn't. It, it would it would be a struggle to keep everything together. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Cause you're working how many hours in your job? So how many hours you work on your on your full time job? So my full time job it would be uh, forty to to forty five hours. Wow. So yeah. you have that, and then you have. I always say wife because that's a job right there. You gotta make. <laughs> no, it is. You gotta yeah. you gotta invest time in, in t you know being together, yeah. talking to them. Yeah. How does your how how was it with your wife during this time? Like you know you boxing and, and, and these two hustles, did they cause any tension or did you guys, how was that? There, uh, I, it, so uh, to be truthful, like at the very beginning, uh, it, it did uh, cause a little bit of tension um, because, you know, it, yeah, it, it makes sense. Yeah. I think any, any normal marriage you would call, it's a huge, yeah. it's a yeah. huge, um, yeah. I mean, cha lifestyle change to start training yeah. at 4 a.m. and then yeah. you're going to bed at 8. So it's yeah. a huge lifestyle yeah. change. Yeah. So any marriage yeah. is going to have yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. 
So yeah, so it it was yeah, exactly. So um, when if I first started doing it, it it it's really sucked for her because like you know she got to spend less time with me, yeah. you know. Um, but I explained to her, you know, this is really some, this is something I really wanted to do. Uh, this is one of something like I wanted to prove to myself that I can do, you know. Mm -hmm. And then she understood that. Um, that's and, cool. You and, hear that? She yeah. understood that. Yeah, I think that's a good point. Yeah. And so um, I, I I realized from from then on, like if I need free time, it needs to be with her. Yeah. You know, and so it's because I have a lot on my plate. You know, I have a lot. Of, I got a lot of things to juggle on my plate. So any 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 free time is is going to be with her, devoted yeah. to her. That's super cool, man. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. I I I, and this is where you inspire me because, mm -hmm. I I think I told you there's some days I don't feel like running or I don't feel like doing something. I think of Philip. I'm like, man, Philip has his wife, has a side hustle, has his job, and he's boxing, and he's making it happen. I'm like, nah, nah. And, it can be done. Don't, you know, don't let that inner voice talk you out of doing something. So I admire you for that because I know it's not easy. So that's why I, as a married man, I ask that because I know, mm. I know it's, it's not easy when you invest time in other things because it takes away from your family mm. or from you. Mm. And, and those are the things that, you know, as a man, I think you got to, I ask that because I know other men want to know how, how did he do it or how is he talking to his wife about it or what? What, what happened? Because I know, I know you, you you didn't just start yeah. going to bed at eight and waking yeah. up at three, and she was yeah. happy. Yeah. You know, I know, I know her probably hearing the alarm yeah. was pissing her off. God, that night, that alarm <laughs> at three in the morning. You yeah. know, so yeah, no, definitely. Yep. Yeah. So tell me, tell me uh, more about this. Is something that was interesting that I didn't know. You told me in Vegas you were vegan, right? Mm. For a couple of years, you said. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you told me it was because of health issues. Yeah. Yeah. If you don't mind, share. Uh, you know how all that came about yeah yeah so um i was i mean going through anybody that's been through college you know it's some you don't make the best choices in college right mm -hmm. you're up late night you're like eating junk food and you're like you're picking up bad habits one of the bad habits i picked up was was smoking cigarettes and so i was smoking like half a pack to quarter pack a day um that on top of the junk food and like my i mean it was it, it it added up later later on in life when i was like um i was like 30 33 went to the doctor checked my blood pressure blood pressure was high checked my cholesterol cholesterol was high and so i was like man i gotta i gotta make a change and so i i just understanding that um with me to understand like that one of the biggest changes you can make is, is is diet and exercise right so um i decided to choose the diet route first and so um i know i um know that uh, that with veganism it can help with um your cholesterol uh, it can also help with your blood pressure because you're eating a lot of like red meats that are inflammatory you're eating a lot of meats that are that are high in fat um, so by switching to veganism, you know, it did help me lose a lot of weight. Um, it did also, uh, help me control my blood pressure. Uh, and also that it just helped me with my cholesterol too. Um, but was it hard? It w it was very hard. How, how did you transition to that? Was it zero to a hundred? Just one day you dropped everything or was it a slow transition? Um, to me, I think it was it was zero to 100 everything oh, shit. Yeah, yeah everything everything it's just kind of my personality um what like i i i just like to jump head first thing things and so one day i just told my wife say hey, I'm, I'm just gonna really try veganism and so she it was she did not like that either because <laughs> she 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 is a big like meter she she likes her food you know yeah. Uh, and before okay. that, you know, we, we were kind of, we, I mean, we still are, we still are like big foodies and be like going to restaurants and trying uh, foods and stuff. Um, so by switching to, by letting her know I'm switching to vegan, she was like, man, that's going to suck. But um, in the end, she was very supportive of me. Um, and so um, I just, uh, so back to your original question, I just, you know, I just started like creating like uh vegan meals and it wasn't like anything special it was like basically just throwing a salad into a box <laughs> yeah and just eating it that way uh and um i did that for about two years 
Um, but then slowly, you know, because my uh, wife isn't vegan, but she, you know, that being said, she supported me a lot. She was like creating yeah. me like uh, these vegan meals. She made, she creates like a delicious vegan lasagna that she made with like cashews and stuff. Uh, it was so, it was like restaurant quality. Um, <laughs> But um, but uh, but she still likes to you know when we go out you know she still orders her own food and, and like you know it's a, it's it's always like a really good like steak or ribs or something and like I'm eating my salad and I'm like looking over like man I want to <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and so um, it it so slowly kind of like shifted back the other way and like I started eating like more and more meats like now like I don't eat as much meats as i used to yeah you know you eat I, it but it's not as bad as it was yeah yeah and i'm i'm sticking more with the healthier meats like chicken and fish yeah um so i th i think um that uh, you know even though i'm not completely vegan like it really it really did help with my my lifestyle my, yeah. my choices in my diet yeah that's yeah. Uh, another thing that was one of, i think i told you it was something that i'm thinking about transition oh, i've been trying to and i've been little by little cutting less and less meat out of my my diet so i was i i, I definitely couldn't do zero to 100. <laughs> i think if i did i'll relapse i'll last me a couple of weeks and i'll come back or something i don't know that's why but hey that's that's all to you man you did it for two years and it changed your life you lost a lot of weight yeah i did i yeah. did yeah. when did you stop the smoking so uh i stopped smoking so i, I smoked for like 10 15 years uh, i think i smoked stopped smoking when i was like 30 31. um so about like seven or eight years ago, um, and and I really I I I, I really did be, uh, for my wife. Um, she she didn't like that I smoked, so I just stopped smoking. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. So now I'm gonna ask you this: How did boxing come about in your life? Like, what made you? Well, where did that Where did the idea of boxing come from, and why boxing? Yeah. So growing up, I mean, I grew up in the '90s, so that was like the area era of like the heavyweights you know you always see like mike tyson lennox lewis on tv i didn't know who they were at that time but like i always like uh saw them on tv and like i was kind of like like enamored by like what i saw um like the the way they they dance and the way they like they fought and like you know this uh just the whole spectacle spectacle yeah. of it. it was it was it was really awesome and um and in in college um oh well, in high school and college you know my friends used to and i used to like backyard box and just for fun and so i've always always been interested in it cool. and so um when um uh, a couple of years ago i was like you know like i want to do something different for fitness and so i kind of like searched around and i saw your boxing gym and i was like you know i'm, I'm just gonna give it a try and i took a couple of your guys' classes and I fell in love with it. And so here I am. So this is something that you've always had an interest in and then out of nowhere, you wanted to change your workout regimen. Yeah. And that's how you pursued it. Yeah. That's cool. How did, uh, how did it go from a workout regimen to going in the ring and actually competing? Yeah. Where did that switch come? So um, uh, when I started working out, like I thought it was great uh you know working out with like you know um with all the coaches here like david and all that and with you um and alex and all them and and but i i always saw like the words like in the background and like that are like like sparring and stuff like that and i always thought to myself you know like why am i learning boxing it's kind of like you know without like getting in the ring and sparring it's kind of like learning trying to learn to swim without getting in the water yeah and so um i was like well um if I, I guess if I wanted to like, you know, start sparring, like I have to take it to the next level and join the Warrior Program. And so that's what I did. I, I uh, applied for the, the Blood Axe and got in and, and started sparring. I have to hear what you told, what this conversation with the wife was like. When you told her you're gonna start sparring. When you first brought this up, cause I, you probably told her, I'm gonna just box for a workout. Yeah. And then you probably, and then out of nowhere, like, hey, I'm gonna start sparring. What did she say? Or what that was like? At the very beginning, so at the, uh, I I told her like, hey, yeah, let's uh, I, I'm I'm start sparring, and then she, I don't think like she completely understood. She, <laughs> she she thought it was like you know just like you know tap 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 or something, uh, like you know just like light sparring. Um, but then uh, the day I came home with a black eye, 
I remember, <laughs> I remember that I came home with a black eye. She was like, where'd you get that from? <laughs> And then I was like, well, you know, you know, I was just, I told you I started sparring at uh, at my boxing gym. And so um, she was like, she gave me a long lecture. She was like, you know, you're a pharmacist. You know, you got to see patients every day. What will they think if you, <laughs> like, would you come into the office with a black guy, you know? And then, um, uh, and so I was like, okay, okay. Um, like, I, you're right, you're right. Um, let me, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, I'm gonna uh, when I box, I, I, I try to like finagle this uh, so that to let her know, and to, to 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 help her understand, like you know, this is something uh, what I wanted to do, and um, let her understand that I I can I can do this, um, and it's it, it is like my passion, and um, so I had to switch up my helmets, you know, and I still got the face guard, you know, just to help protect against black eyes and stuff like that yeah um so I, uh, it was yeah it, it it took a while but i guess she she slowly understood like you know this is something i really wanted to do yeah yeah i knew i knew that conversation was gonna be good that's why i had to ask i knew <laughs> i knew she wasn't like okay he has a black eye so i'm gonna ask you this how was it coming to the gym and knowing that in order to transition from the classes to the ring, you had to do a test and all this. How did you feel about that? Um, I I felt like it was it was good. Um, I I felt like when I first heard about the Warrior program and all and like all the different levels of, of the Warrior, like it, I immediately thought of like like the the belt system, like mm. other like martial arts have, like karate and stuff like that. And so, um, like I I'm a person who likes structure. And so when I heard like I had to like do this, learn the oath and learn the pledge and then um, learn the, the, the basic combos and learn how to wrap your hands. I'm like, well, this that means that, you know, the coaches here and the staff here, they really they really care about their fighters. And they really want you to like do your best. You know, they want you to like um, understand the basics before you get in the ring because they're not going to like throw someone who doesn't know how to wrap their hands just into the ring because you know they're you're gonna get hurt yeah so so I immediately i understood like the, the the coaches and the team here care about you and they want to make sure that you succeed yeah, yeah that is that's exactly it you know I, the reason why i ask some people uh don't like it some people feel weird crazy and it's usually people that have that come from a different boxing gym mm. or if they experience boxing in a different aspect in a different way so in a different gym, I mean. Mm. So when it comes to that, it is very different. They don't want to. They don't want to do it. They don't believe in it. Mm. But you hit it right on the nail. It's that. It's the structure. And then when you have the structure, it just makes it so much easier mm. to have an uh, amateur team of 20, 30 people. Because mm. without that, without no structure, I wouldn't be able to coach that many people. You know what I mean, because you know yeah. what you had to do. You know, I don't yeah. have to tell you every day. Yeah. You know, you yeah. know exactly what we have to follow. Yeah. Tell us about each level that you remember. So starting off with starting with the classes, Blood Axe, Attila, and Twin Impaler. What do you remember from each one or what did you take from each level? Yeah, so um, uh, when I start off uh, as a Blood Axe, Blood Axe I, 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 remember, um, I remember that was when, you know, we really started sparring and um, what, I took from that is that you know if you're that boxing isn't something easy um that you know spar when i sparred for the first time i remember sparring uh against uh, uh isaiah for the first time and i couldn't last like i couldn't last 45 seconds in the first round yeah by 45 seconds i was just breathing heavy and i was like and i was just tired i was too tired to even throw a punch yeah. Um, I remember that, Philip. Yeah, and it and then it made me understand that you know this this isn't you know boxing isn't easy. You know if you if you're if you're um, if you want to uh, if you want to compete and if you want to like uh, be really good, like you you got to work hard at it, and then you got to like really really understand the sport and 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 really try to develop develop yourself. Um, and, and then at Attila with sparring other people, other gyms. Yeah. So with uh, with sparring other gym men, the first time I sparred at the other gym, like I was so nervous. 
Um, and, uh, and, you know, I continue to be nervous whenever I spar other gyms or even when I, I, guess I spar people I know at, at, at this gym. Um, but it, what I, I guess what I took from that is, uh, is how to like overcome your nervousness and how to like, and I understand uh, how to understand, like sometimes you got to realize that it's, it's just, it's just work. And then you have to go in there just with the mindset, this is, this is work. This is something you have to do. Yeah. And then in Paler, the last one, we started competing. Yeah. Um, That'd be probably the funnest one, huh? Yeah. Yeah. That was, that was, uh, the funnest one, I think. I think one of the, I think one of the greatest moments was like, was was having my ran, hand raised at the, the, the time I was in, uh, the time I won my, my competition. You know, getting your hand raised on stage, man, that's that's like the greatest feeling, yeah. feeling ever. Um, Tell us about your competitions. Tell us about the first one. So first. But you had two yeah. total, correct? Yeah, yeah. All right, tell us about them. Yeah, so I had one in Chicago and I recently just had one in Las Vegas. Uh, the one in Chicago, um, it, uh, uh, it was one where, uh, unfortunately, I had, I had to go by myself. Yeah, um, I feel I, horrible. No, yeah, it's okay. I, I mean, still you, feel horrible, and he yeah. threw it in my face right now. This <laughs> asshole, and I put nah, that guy. Keep going. No, keep I on. totally understand because you you have other fighters. That, you were you had fighters in Wichita. It wasn't even to, yeah. yeah. It wasn't even that. I just had other fighters. Yeah. It's just we had yeah. so much going on that all the coaches were spread out everywhere at that time, mm -hmm. and there was I thought David was going to go with you, and then at the end David didn't go with you. So, at the end of the day, Philip handled his Chicago trip yeah. by himself, his first fight, by himself. Extra credit, man. So tell <laughs> it. All right, keep going. Keep keep talking. Yeah, I was so nervous. And you can uh, you can ask my wife. She was. I was like pacing back in the back and forth in the hotel. Like I was nervous about trying to make weight. Nervous about my fight coming up. Like it was. Uh, it was. It was. Um, honestly, it was. It was kind of stressful to me. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, the, when I stepped into the ring, uh, and I threw my first punch, uh, the nervousness didn't like just went away and like, it was just work and, uh, it felt, it felt really good. It was, it was definitely, it was definitely more of a brawl, just kind of reviewing the, like when I, cause I recorded, I was re reviewing the footage. Like it was definitely a, a brawl cause I, I had a coach in my corner, but he wasn't like, he didn't know me like you guys knew me. Um, there wasn't a bond. And, yeah, and you know what? Yeah. I'm going to talk about that. That's very important. When you, whoever's in the corner with you, you're not on, it's, it's more than them just giving you water. Yeah. That You have to like know each other. Yeah. They have to know you. You got to know them. And then you got to trust each other. Yeah. And and then you know, like I know what Philip's strengths are. I know what Philip's weakness are. Yeah. I know what, you know, and you, and with that as a coach, you got to kind of strategize on how you're going to beat this person. Yeah. And it's hard to do that with a stranger. Yeah, exactly. When you do not you know them. I was talking to my friend, uh, my friend Tang was who was at Vegas, and then because he saw my he saw videos of my uh, fight in Chicago, and like he was there in person for my um, fight in Las Vegas, and he said it was I looked so much different with like my actual coach in my corner in Las Vegas. So you mm -hmm. in my corner, it was more it was it was more surgical. Like yeah. it was because uh, you told me exactly what to do, like like what punches to throw and. And I mean, the results speak for themselves. Like the guy was out in like 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, it makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. I, and, and this, going back to the warrior program, you learn all this mm -hmm. in the warrior program, like the combinations and all that. Mm -hmm. And I know, and we practice them over and over and over and over. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of becomes kind of like, ah, I'm tired, I already know I'm gonna do them, but this is exactly why. Mm -hmm. So things like this, you, you're ready to do it on the fly. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna give you credit, Philip. you make, the coach look good because you listen so well. You know, you listen super, so good. If I tell this guy to go in the ring and do a jumping jack, he'll do a jumping jack. <laughs> like he does exactly what I tell him. It, and regardless if it sounds right or wrong, he just trusts me. And I think as a, as a coach, that's what we love to see in our boxers is someone that's gonna listen, regardless if it's how crazy it sounds. Just listen to your coach. And the best way to show your coach that you trust him is by doing what he says. And then if it, and then there he can see, oh shit, I was right or I was wrong. And 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 then the coach will make adjustments. So yeah. So thank you for trusting in me. So keep going. Yeah. What's the uh, first fight? Yeah. Chicago. 
it was raw. You were nervous. Yeah, yeah. It was. It was a. Uh, uh, it was definitely a uh, raw, and um, it. Uh, I, I ended up. I mean, it went. It went th uh, three whole rounds, and um, and I, I guess my training kicked in or whatever. I mean, um, I ended up winning, and and uh, and uh, like I said earlier, you know, uh, when I got my hand raised for the first time, like that was like the best experience. Yeah. That's, that was an amazing experience, um, and it was it was it was just awesome. Um, after and after that, and like a month later, you know, went to Vegas, and and then um, like I said just a second ago, it was it was a totally different atmosphere, especially when like you know I had you in my corner. I was still definitely nervous. I was going to ask yeah. you how was the nerves like? Yeah, it 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 was it it was definitely I was still nervous, but it it wasn't. It would, I, I felt like having you kind of like sitting next to me because um, you were like we were like before the like a couple rounds before the fight you were like doing giving me uh doing mid work with me and you're sitting with me and you're kind of talking to me and it did help um you know just knowing that you know i had my coach here like it did help calm my nerves yeah um but that being said i was still nervous i was still i was yeah. trying to meditate you know i was trying to meditate to very calm my nerves. Yeah. yeah but it was definitely very different and um that one um I, it was, and, and then um, with, the, with the fight itself, you know, uh, I got a knockout in, in about 20 seconds. So I was, I was definitely prepared for like a longer fight, but after it was, it was called, I was like, man, I was, I was, yeah, I'm ready to hit mitts or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like I, that's yeah, it. I yeah. got more. Yeah. I, I got more uh, to do. Uh, what, what was, um, we, I got to bring this up. What was your take when i first called you anesthesia <laughs> uh, man i thought that was a, i thought that was the funniest thing um, so so those that don't know philip's nickname is anesthesia and i let him explain what the drug anesthesia is obviously those that don't know yeah <laughs> it puts you to sleep yeah and yeah it's it's a it's a it's a whole class of drugs right a whole class of drugs that um anesthesiologists or uh, to help uh, use to help put you to knock you out uh, so that they can do procedures on you. Um, and this guy puts people out <laughs> in the ring, and he's a pharmacist. Yep. So it fits perfect. It fits perfect. I was like, anesthesia. One day it came in, I was like, man, that's, that's it. That's it. That's his nickname. You call me Anastasia, And though. then I messed up. I messed up and said Anastasia. And then he was like, wait, what, what are you calling me? I was like, wait. It's, I'm like, it's a drug. He's like, anesthesia, Jose. <laughs> anesthesia. So... And then of course, his wife. What did your wife say when I when we when we you came home and we're like anesthesia? She, she didn't say nothing. She just rolled her eyes. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, this fucking guy's full of himself. <laughs> this guy's full of himself. So now you finish your second fight. You're two and zero. Oh. What's what's next for Philip? What's Philip going to do now? Hey, and not just boxing wise in general. What's next for Philip? Yeah. Um... So I, so right now I think I'll probably step take a step back from competing. Mm -hmm. um, I really want to focus on my career and kind of developing the current business I have. Yeah. Um, and also kind of developing, um, uh, starting my family. Um, uh, me and my wife, you know, we don't have kids yet, and so we're 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 looking to have some kids soon. That's cool, little baby anesthesia. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that's that's where I want to focus like on. That sounds like an awesome plan. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you this, and you're the second person I've told this to. I told this to Levi, and now you're the second one. I told Levi this. I said, "You beat the game. You beat the game. You beat boxing." So what I mean by that is, mm -hmm. there's people that do boxing, and then boxing ends up using and abusing them, and and and. They, they're in the game for too long, and then at the end of the day, boxing used them. Mm. Now, you used boxing, and you completed a game. You got in here, you, 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 were, you were focused, locked in, you had a mission, you did what you had to do, and then you walked away from it. That's exactly what you have to do. Don't get caught up, and I, and I try to explain this to my, to my boxers, there's some that I'm like, hey, I think you should stop, hey, you should keep going. Get where, get to the point where you know that you gained something from it and you're ready to get past it. Yeah. Like, 
obviously if you're not doing this, but if you kept fighting and fighting and you're like, hey, I want to do this, I want to do that, there'd be a time where I'd be like, all right, Philip, like, I think it's time to close this book. I know you're having fun and all mm-hmm. this, but it's time to be realistic mm-hmm. and compared to where you're at in life and what other things you got going on. Mm-hmm. But you're doing that and you see that and you realize that on your own. You got the 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 all everything you boxing to give you, mm-hmm. you took it, you gained it. Now you take that and go conquer the world. And I think you did that, Philip. So I'm proud of you to 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 I'm proud to be able to tell you that I see that you accomplished and you beat the game. Mm-hmm. So so good job, Philip. Thank you. Yeah. Um it's it, this by boxing is uh, the lessons I learned from boxing is I'm gonna take for like my entire life. You yeah. Know? Uh, I mean, it's I still have a lot of love for the sport, mm-hmm. um, but like I said, you know, like uh, I have other things that you know I want to accomplish. Yep, and you uh, will accomplish them. Yeah, especially when you have the discipline you have and the work ethic. Yeah, like think about it. You woke up and trained at four a.m. Mm-hmm. and did all this. Now imagine applying that same energy and that same work ethic to what you have going on. Mm-hmm. Imagine what you're gonna turn all those things into. Yeah. And that's what I mean by you use boxing for that. Yeah. Cause you use boxing to teach you that. Mm-hmm. You use boxing to show you that you're capable of doing that. Yeah. Now that you know that you're capable, or you've done it before, right. now you're gonna take this and do it in your professional career. You're gonna fucking kill it. You know what I'm saying? And that's what I'm excited to see. Thank so you. that's super cool, Philip. I appreciate super, that. Super, super cool. And um, I wanted to ask you this, how, how, what would you tell somebody that's like contemplating on doing the warrior program or has a little doubt? Because I see a lot of people, I, I, I walk by in the classes and I tell people all the time, like, dude, when are you going to be with me? When are you going to do this? And I ask them and I ask them over and over. Mm-hmm. And I know deep down they want to or they, they don't have the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a family. They have work. They have, they have a lot of things going on. I could come up with a, a lot of, of different reasons why they're not doing it. What would you tell that person? I would tell that person, if it's something that you really want to do, um, just do it. Just start. Um, you're, you're only going to get older. Um, you know, the, the times, the, the, the time is, is, uh, and it's not going to, you know, it's not going to, getting better, you know, the, your family's going to still be there. Um, you know, it just, I, I would say, uh, just do it and, and just, and just don't, and just worry about the, yeah, I'm, I'm not sure where I'm going with this. Um, cause yeah, I guess I, I, yeah, I never, never really thought about that way. I, cause, cause my attitude's always been just kind of like do it, you know? And like that's that, a that, good example. That's, that's a good tip right yeah. there. Yeah, but I know that doesn't really work for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, I guess, but if if someone is contemplating and they, they they have the part, their heart and the passion to do it, then I say just do it and just uh just do it and and everything will fall into place if, yeah. if you're really passionate about it. Just make it happen. Yeah. Don't overthink it. I feel like yeah. some people overthink it. Yeah. Oh, I don't know about enough time. Oh, I don't yeah. know if I'm gonna be good at. Yeah. And, and to be honest, I don't think it's about being good at it or not. It's about getting the lesson from it, that yeah. you're capable of doing it, right. to build the confidence for yourself of what you can achieve when you set your mind to do something. Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, exactly. And then if you happen to knock some people out in 30 seconds like this guy did, hey, that was a bonus. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but but work towards, towards something. All right, now I'm going to ask you something with your career. If there's someone listening to this and they want to get in the pharmacy, they want to do what you do, what kind of tips or what do you recommend them to do there? Um, so pharmacy in particular, I I would recommend really understanding the profession and really understanding what you're getting into. Uh, uh, pharmacy right now is so saturated. Uh, there's so many pharmacy schools just pumping out so many pharmacists. Uh, you're I've been really blessed to 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 get a job that that I really like. Um, that's not as um, stressful as the jobs that say CVS or Rite Aid or one of your typical pharmacy jobs. Um, but, uh, if you really want to, if you really passionate about pharmacy, um, spend a day with a pharmacist at a CVS. I was going to ask that. Yeah. Could you do that? Can you like 
spend the day and just so, how do you sign up for that? How do you do that? So you you would um so it usually it would have to be through a program because you're you're gonna go in there and you're gonna deal with protect the health information. And so they're not gonna let um, just, some, anybody. Yeah, just anybody because because yeah you, you have to sign paperwork to make sure you know you don't like you know you don't tell like oh ex- uh, mrs smith is on this medication you know um so you find find a program through either your school or your high school or 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 through or even working as a pharmacy technician um that way you get that experience uh in the pharmacy and you know exa- what ex- exactly it entails before committing all your time and your money into to pharmacy school because it's yeah. it's uh the market's tough right now um and um pharmacy pharmacy isn't like it's used uh, like it has been yeah, yeah that's a good tip too though as yeah. far as getting into the field volunteering see what it's like before you really commit to it yeah and that goes with any job I yeah think, i know? was gonna say it goes yeah. with anything mm-hmm yeah, uh, you don't you don't want to spend eight years in school and then realize I don't want to do yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't exactly. like this. That's great. That's a great tip. All right, I'm gonna start doing some random questions. <laughs> okay, is that cool? Yeah, okay, well, sure. Uh, there's actually one that's not too random. What's your favorite thing about the gym? You know the I think the favorite thing about this gym is the people. Um, so I mean, from the coaches to all of my teammates yeah. and all the people who are just here to work out, like everybody's, I think everybody's just so welcoming and so friendly. Like it's, it makes, it makes coming to the gym and learning boxing so much easier when yeah. everybody's just so welcoming, you know? Yeah. And, and it's, um, the coaches, I mean, like you guys are really tough on us, you know? Um, but it, it just is so much easier because you guys are just in the way that you guys are yeah that's a good one i i agree with you the people do make everything yeah everything much more enjoyable mm-hmm. yep all right what's your favorite restaurant to eat at locally locally uh <laughs> talking about like roseville or like sacramento any roseville sack this local Okay, so um, don't tell me the Chinese restaurant in Vegas, which was fire, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Philip. Yeah. Philip treated me to some fire ass Chinese food <laughs> in Vegas. But yeah, here locally, what's your spot? So currently, uh, my spot right now is a place in um, it's it's off of Stockton Boulevard. It's called um, it's called Sea Pot. So it's all you can eat um, a hot pot and all you can eat Korean barbecue at the same time. Oh shit! Sure. And it's it's Sounds so. Silly. Yeah, it, it, it's funny. It's so good. It's so good. So they have a grill. Yeah, it has a grill. They have a, I mean, you know, Korean barbecue. They have a grill in front of you and like you can grill all you want. And then they have this like conveyor belt um, that has different kinds of like meats and vegetables that you can throw into like this, this pot of soup that's boiling hot and it just cooks right in front of you and it's super good. Cool. Yeah. All right. Tell us something about Philip. Not that many people know. Oh, man. Um, not many people know. Uh, man, I don't know. I don't know. That's a that's an interesting question. I don't know. I'm a pretty open book, so most there's people... got to be something yeah. in there. Not that many people know <laughs> something. Yeah. Uh, uh, I've been. Sp- Secretly trying to learn Spanish through Duol- Duolingo. I don't oh, know. Yeah. That is <laughs> secretive. Why are you being secretive? You want to pull up to the gym and dump <laughs> Trying to impress you? <laughs> yeah. No, I'm not sure. That's good. That's good. Yeah. What What drew you to want to learn Spanish? Uh, I I, th- I think that uh, it, it is a really common language. It is. Um, that that's that that's going to get more and more like. You, like popular or more, or more and more utilized in especially in California mm-hmm. and the patients I, I I deal with a lot of them are Spanish speaking mm-hmm. and so it just it just it's just better for me to be able to like connect with them yeah if I'm able to speak Spanish and it is and it's worked like somewhat so far even though like with a very minimal Spanish I'll learn you know if I uh, uh you know just by saying like hola, hola como estas you know like you know they it makes them more comfortable yeah. when they're with yeah you you, you know? connect like yeah. you connect emotionally like, yeah oh, I like this guy. yeah yeah this guy's yeah, yeah it's cool um is there anything that you would tell someone listening to make sure to take from this podcast is there anything you would like them to take from it um, 
Yeah, I, I think uh, anything like uh, if you if if you have a passion for something, and it's and you've been contemplating contemplating on whether or not you should be doing it, or you kind of been putting it aside, putting it aside. I would say, you know, just do it, do it now before it's uh, before it gets too late and you're too old and you can't do it anymore. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Let's make it happen. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, how do people stay connected with you? They want to connect with Philip. Yeah, so um, you'll see me at the gym still, so I'll be taking the classes. What classes? Uh, so people know, morning or afternoon? Do you know yet? Uh, probably the afternoon, uh, but I'm, I am kind of a morning person, so I'll probably switch back and forth. Yeah, back and forth. Yeah, cool. and then of course you can find me on Instagram or whatever. <laughs> yep. What's your Instagram? Uh, I feel pills. I feel pills. Anesthesia. Yep. yep. Anesthesia. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Philip, for yeah. coming on. Uh, thank you for sharing your story and, and everything you experienced through boxing and through life, through school, your love story. There's a lot of personal stuff. So I appreciate you not only sharing that, but taking time out of your busy life to be here with us. So thank you, Anastasia. Yeah, absolutely. Thank and, you for having uh, me. And uh, I'm excited to see what you do in the next part of your life because I know you're going to kill it. I'll see you in the gym. Thank you, oh, Philip. Thank you. All right. I hope everyone has a great week. Um, next episode coming up, I'm going to have one with Andy Vences and Xavier Martinez, both uh, professional boxers. They just recently retired, and we're going to be talking boxing. It's going to be a good episode. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this one with, with Anesthesia Wynn. And uh, have a great Monday. Have a great week. We're out. <laughs>